I heard a rumor. <laughs> yeah. Hey, folks, welcome to Between the Rolls, our weekly talk show here at Murder Hobo Inc. Uh, tonight, we'll be recapping, doing our weekly recap of the previous uh, campaign episodes, actually, from the past week. Uh, tonight, we have our esteemed panel. And uh, yeah, um, if you like the show, you can follow us on uh, YouTube, Twitter. Uh, the information should be right there on the panel. If you like us enough that you want to buy our stuff, we've got some nice stuff at tinyurl.com slash rpg yeah. swag so go and check that out we got everything so we even got skateboards I always go on about skateboards so duvet yeah. covers they are duvet covers beach towels they got them they got, <laughs> shower, they got shower curtains i beach think towels. they do i think they do i like so. beach towels you know oh, yeah uh, beach the towels look nice i'm right I actually got it up i'm pulling I pulled up the screen and started looking at the accessories. So, yeah, they're pretty cool. Nothing like letting everyone at the beach know that you'd be willing to stab them in the back if you got too close. That's it. That's right. <laughs> Social distancing right there, folks. <laughs> <laughs> That's, we can actually modify the little things that I said. Social distance. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, let's go around and start introducing ourselves. Uh, let's see. We'll start with our first panelist. That will be Carol. Carol, go ahead and introduce It'll yourself. Be me. Oh my goodness. I go first for no, I'm just kidding. I think I go first quite a few times. Hi everyone. My name Thanks, is Carol. Carol. Now on to Kyle. What? Kyle, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Carol, go ahead. Hey, you know, this is for mature audiences only. So. <laughs> it is. We are for mature audiences. Our language gets uh yeah, a little little rowdy sometimes. So. A little fucking terrible. That's how it gets. Uh so as I was about to say before I was talked over, because that's the running joke of this podcast. Yeah. Or Twitch stream or whatever the fuck we are. Hi, my name is Carol. I we're am a podcast. A, I think we're a Twitch stream. Go ahead. Oh, we're both. Speaking of we're both. We are we, both. We, oh, yeah. Tell, yeah. Tell, if you tell, don't want to look at our faces. Yeah, if you don't want to look at these we money makers, a, we do have our um, the majority of our episodes <laughs> actually uh, downloaded to podcast, <laughs> so you can follow us there. The information will be on the page also on the screen. So. All right, now I'll actually do my intro. Hi, everyone. Yes. My name is Carol. I am a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and a commission mini painter. Uh, I'm on the can Thursday bi weekly campaign uh, of Cthulhu Rises through Cthulhu Comes. I'm still not sure which one it really is. <laughs> still trying to decide. Everybody, but at the end, everybody dies. So um, I play Anja. Anja. Yeah. Anja. Anja. I like Anya. that Anja character. She's real sweet. <laughs> Knows I how play, to swing the sword. I, I play that on there. And I used to play Taryn, and uh, I'm on the one shots, and I'm on this. Uh, and um, and these I had to come back this week because these guys are a bunch of fuckheads to me last week. So uh, we no, that bad. no emails required. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were hilarious, and uh, I enjoyed listening to to the shenanigans. Well, and, we, the, and the discussion. It was good last week. Yeah, we tease you because we love you, Carol. So, <laughs> Aww. Uh, so next, uh, let's since I mentioned him, let's go on to Kyle. Kyle, oh, come on, Kyle. Kyle. <laughs> this is what he does to me. This is what I he does, does, folks. Just bear with it. us for a minute. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, excuse me. I'm sick. I need to take uh, a few more drinks than I normally do. <laughs> Thanks for uh, for taking the reins tonight, David. Uh, you are doing a splendid job compared to some of the other people we've had hosting this show in the past. <laughs> I won't name them out loud at all. Uh, <laughs> I hi, I'm yeah. Kyle. I am the uh, 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 dungeon master for um, Cthulhu Rises. Everyone dies. Uh, the consolation yeah. campaign. No. Um, every other Thursday. It's not a consolation. Uh, and campaign. when I'm not doing that, uh, and I'm not sick and hurling out my guts, I usually host this show. But uh, I'm excited to see David do this, and I'm going to count his uh and ums this time, as well as my own. So I have why, to... man? I I gave you the best advice. Just relax and go with it, man. <laughs> you'll 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 stop. So. 
Okay. I've heard that advice before. <laughs> no one mentioned about the olive oil, though. <laughs> nice. Okay, now we're moving on to our honcho here, uh, Mr. Scott DM Pumba. Scott, why hi. don't you introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I'm Scott. Um, I'm a uh, most of the time I'm a DM, but on on this uh, on this forum with Murder Herbo Inc. I tend to play a little bit more often as well as participate on between the roles whenever I can. Um, I am a player on the Calamity campaign. Um, and uh, yeah, th this is this is a whole lot of fun. We're having fun. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be. <laughs> is it fun though? Is it really fun? It depends on who your DM is. No, I'm just kidding. If you, yeah, want, if true. you want horror and tension, you yes. got Kyle. Yes. So, <laughs> if you see, I think that's it. fun. I think yeah. it's fun. I think it, it's fun to watch other people get scared. And if you want I tension. think it's, <laughs> yeah, and you know what, Kyle's doing an excellent job of scaring the shit out of all of us. Yeah, we'll get it's into that, folks, tonight when we, recap, when we recap it. <laughs> it's going to, yeah, it was a heck of a week for our campaigns. So, and last but not least, there's me. I'm David. I play on Thursdays, uh, our Thursday show, our, what Carol likes to call a soap opera. And uh, it's no, cacophony. no. I do not call it a soap opera, although it is a soap opera. I knew well. I could, could, I'm glad you can agree fucking, that it's a soap opera. It's a campaign, though. It's still a campaign. It's a scenario, folks. It's so. a campaign. <laughs> uh, yeah, I play Zadar, the arcane trickster, on that one. And I also play Ingve on our Calamity campaign, which I'm on with Scott. And Scott is Rakir. So. Uh, anyway, yeah. folks, we're going to start our recap, and tonight we are going to start with episode 214, Cthulhu Comes, Everybody Dies. Uh, so, Carol, why don't you give us the recap on that? Me? Yeah, I was going to be Kyle. I think I'm going to stick Kyle with it, because God I'm knows I can't. You want to hear my horrible voice as yes! I go off and sneeze? <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, it was a great yeah. campaign. Everything was wonderful. Yeah, sure. <laughs> go ahead, Carol. <laughs> Oh God! What did, so let's see. I remember where we picked up is we had uh, the, the there was a satchel that uh, <clears throat> had been taken away by this kid. I didn't realize it was a kid actually for the longest time. You know, I was supposed to keep saying thief, the thief, and yeah. I kept saying the boy, the kid. The kid. You, you yeah, I didn't. I let I, that slip way too many times. I thought yeah. it was, I thought it was like a shambling, you know, I thought it was like some shambling, creepy thing initially. And then eventually he stay, he started slipping in kid and I'm like, wait, it's a kid. Um, I mean, yeah, I intentionally slipped in that it was a kid because you were getting a better view of him as you were chasing him. And, and that made sense. So we basically, that was how it started. It started with us chasing the kid who stole the package. Uh, and leaving behind ca uh, the captain to deal with the uh, dead warp, I believe it was. Um, so we chased him through town. Oh, yeah, that was fun. My dice basically hate me uh, multiple times. I remember I had... <laughs> you don't roll well in the D20 system or the D100 <laughs> system. And I had to switch to the D6 like... system. <laughs> No, it was, oh, yeah, I, I wrote, basically, we went, we ended up going down a pothole-laden street, to which I Man, probably I'm rolled, man. what, a one on my friggin' acrobatics check, followed by a 100, which in a, the, a do 100 system is the worst thing you can roll. It's the wap, that one of, of a, you know, basically of a Call of Cthulhu. So I rolled a 100, and then I, like an idiot, no, I knew damn right what I was doing, but I just eventually brought up, I'm like, well, there are tentacle things in this area because I saw one eat a cat in the previous episode. And sure That's enough, great. a tentacle thing came out and tried to drag me down and bit me and, and I had to be helped by our awesome monk friend. You got Pennywise. The ever creepy, <laughs> the ever creepy brand. But we go through it and watch the episode. I'm not going to go through every single thing. Um, yep. I know he, he got stuck too at one point, but we all got through it. 
Hey, you and know what? Chasing... With the help of teamwork in your party, yeah, the entire team working together, you got past those tentacles. Didn't I remember you? Kate, uh, Caitlin, or AK Cleo. She stole a horse. I'm gonna go with stolen because <laughs> she she did stop and talk to the owners and did ask to borrow it. As for whether or not that horse ever gets back home, who knows? It may get eaten by a tentacle thing on the way there. Um, but she came, she actually tried, I think she was trying to come around and she took the advice of one of the guards who were trying to come around to cut him off, but we didn't make it. The kid, the kid actually outdistanced us and we followed his tracks. Uh, I have survived also. We followed his tracks back to uh, Finn, Ma I think it's Finn or Fen? Fen. Fen, F-E-N-N. -N. Yeah. I wanted to ben go with Manor. the fishiness, but then also just change it just a little bit, you know? It's not the Dagon in, it's the Dagon it in. <laughs> it's not Finn Manor, it's Fen Manor. Hey, I think Cthulhu Rob agrees it should be Cthulhu Rises because he just posted that in Twitch chat. <laughs> yeah, no, so. because what I imagine the logo is, it's uh, that awkward teenage Cthulhu <laughs> wearing sweatpants with a teenage boner poking out, you know. That awkward mm. age in every Cthulhu life. <laughs> I was thinking more of a couple of palm trees, and, and but I'll get to, I'll figure that. But anyways, we get to uh, Fen Manor and realize that originally we had all thought that he was going for the temple, the temple that we had come from, the temple to Dagon. Uh, but no, instead the tracks went into the manor, so we followed him there. And basically, the manor was a pretty interesting, very creepy uh, dungeon crawl, so to speak. Not a lot of, no, like, no fighting. This is the thing, but it was all horror and creep. I mean, in the bedrooms, there we found ropes attached to the, uh, the legs of the bed that were, like, frayed and such. We found, you know, kid-sized clothes. It's, it was fucking creepy. And great. It's Cthulhu. So, of course, it was fucking creepy. It's to be expected. And it is for mature audiences only. So, I will say the clothes were halfling size. Halfling yeah, size. they were halfling size. I am <laughs> a father now. I try not to put kids in too many things because it it hurts here a little bit. And I don't like doing that. They were oh, halfling sized. Okay, that is fair. I And that is very <laughs> fair, actually. Um, I said so kids just make it more creepy, but if it ha if that is too no, no. much of a trigger, that's fine. Creepy things don't happen to kids. Kids yeah. are the creepy things. <laughs> and aren't wrong. That's actually very true in a lot of movies and and uh, such and stories and such. It is the kids that are creepy. Um, but Wait so for your we get conversation. So, as I said, watch the episode to see all the creepy shit that happened in the house. Uh, the The bathroom is just, oh my gosh, I knew it was, I knew it was a terrible idea to go in there. There was a tub full of, like, disgustingness and, oh, there was the lilac, everything that smelled of lilacs, except for where we might think it smelled of lilies, but there are no flowers. There are no fresh flowers. Uh, the scent was coming from the bathtub with the grossness in it. Uh, I remember that. I said there was a ton of like real creepy things in this episode. And we ended up, we went upstairs. We found a secret door that led upstairs. Um, we knew actually there was an upstairs because I could hear the fire upstairs through the fireplace. And we we went upstairs and there was a huge library so of course we lost riley you know our warlock uh slash researcher up in the library upstairs and brand continued on and came down he found the thief who i believe had the satchel and when he looked outside there was this tall gangly monstrous thing coming out of the ocean <laughs> so which, that was out of the ocean and then went into the ocean. Yeah, that's right. Came out and went back. And to basically which our highest, probably, I think our highest wisdom character of the entire group promptly failed his uh, uh, wisdom, uh, wisdom save against it. And uh, I know he critically failed. He rolled a one and ended up at three level, four levels of dread. Four levels of dread. By almost the way, insanity. Uh, you almost got an insanity on the third freaking wait, <laughs> third session. 
Almost. Third session in. Holy shit. By the way, the dwarf that the captain <laughs> was watching over yep. was at seven levels of dread. Oh my god. So you're you're not far away from just dying of fear in this either. <laughs> Is that how he died? Did he die of fear? Or was he I thought he was murdered. You can do the investigation. Yeah, but when I get. I don't we... think DJ is watching, and he's the one who's actually going to ask the questions. Uh, Probably. Uh, so between you and me, he uh, he died of fear because he was a nut job. <laughs> oh gosh, did I have anything I wanted to add to yeah, that? Did yeah, you want to add anything? Is there any? Is there anything you want to add? I mean, I hope those of you watching, I know it's not like typically in this 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 channel. We have a lot of games with a lot of you know fights and stuff. So this may be a bit different than what people are used to seeing, but I think it's really cool and I really enjoy playing it. So because well, I, I, I saw had... I saw lots. Of, I saw who was it? Rob was basically going. You know, set the place on fire, kill, you know, find something to kill, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, that, that, that was that was something that, that I wanted to make a quick comment on. I realized because I, I, I watched, um, I got through about maybe about 45 minutes of, of the episode before I had to, had to get something else. But but I was really, you know, kind of grabbed by the story yeah. and I'll, 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 I'll finish it later. The one of the first moral choices that the players had to make was whether or not to to chase a thief. Or to help someone who they assume was dead, maybe dead, maybe not dead. And then there were questions of an Asimar uh, asking about the uh, guards along the way. Aren't you going to help? Or but they said, well, we kind of pointed you in the right direction. It's these type of you know moral questions that you ask to do. And where I think some of the viewers may see is that <coughs> the world of of you know Cthulhu, that type of sin, that that type of background, you never really know who's on your side. The, the level of sure. trust that you have with the NPCs is right about there. You know, so that's it, such it, a it, good I point. am glad you caught that, Scott. <laughs> oh my God, that is that is a really good point because the, as, the, the decision yeah. metrics you're going to do in order to say, do I do this, do that? In D and D, sometimes it's a little bit more linear, right? And you can kind of tell when you're being, you know railroaded or you know choo choo get on the train this is this is my plot hook this is my thing this is my going we're going to probably you know talk about that later on tonight and how we <laughs> like that play into it but cthulhu is a different animal and i'm really really enjoying how just the sense of dread and creepiness and not knowing who you can trust how that how the environment ends up being <laughs> its own whole it, little you know thing it is Yep. By the by the way, I want to address I want to address something there. When yeah, Caitlin was or Cleo was talking to the guards, I and and they basically you know kind of bore off and didn't seem to be interested in helping Chase. I'm like, that makes sense. And I'm I, and I'm start my brain's starting to go to is the whole town in some big conspiracy? Are they all a bunch of Dagon cultists? <laughs> no, that is. That's that is a really good thing about this particular, you know, this particular horror system. Either and as disciples for disciples or and, thralls. <laughs> and the funny thing as for leaving the person we supposedly died, I mean, he, he, we didn't leave him alone. We also, we also there was also um, Jeremiah too. We left with the the captain. I was gonna say right. you forgot about Jeremiah. <laughs> well, I think I think I think that I was gonna I think. I guess we didn't say anything. It's one of those things where you cut from last session, this session, it can be a little wonky how you come in. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I didn't forget about it initially, but then everybody just started taking off. So I mean, but basically we would have left him with, with the captain to bring him in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they said it wasn't, you know, but, and the captain being there that, and she's telling us to go after the thief. So hence that was the, the, at least my thought of why we went going went after him instead of taking care of the the well, maybe the captain's dead in cahoots with him too maybe that's it could be to bring in it, fresh meat it could be we'll find out there you go <laughs> I, do, I mean i don't think so but uh but you'll find out in a week and a couple of days a week for oh, the next gosh, session I have to plan for that session of what the Shit. hell 
What the hell are we calling now yourselves? You Cthulhu rises or Cthulhu comes? Cthulhu rises. Every, uh, you know, it works either way. If you're talking to small children, say Cthulhu comes. If you're talking to adults who understand innuendos a little bit better, <laughs> Cthulhu rises. Oh, Everybody dies. Yeah, but Cthulhu comes also has a devil on time that's pretty obvious. Hey, nice. we're working on logos, so you better decide. <laughs> I have. I, I have. Well, let's an get idea like the too. Nickelodeon splat. And then it says Cthulhu comes, everybody dies. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Exactly. That would be good. Nice. Frank, you taking this down? You taking notes, Frank? He probably is. I so. had an idea. I was gonna do <laughs> I wanted to do a side view you know, profile view of Cthulhu with the tentacles out and have the words weaved in there. I would like to do that. Okay. Maybe a palm tree somewhere because it's it's supposed to be an island adventure, but we have yet to even see the island. <laughs> we'll get there at some point. Sure. Gosh, you if know what? You guys are doing insane. a written module, and we haven't even touched the written. We story. haven't even got to the module wow. yet. <laughs> That's great. Well, why don't we move on to our uh, next episode, which is episode two fifteen, entitled "Problems with Our Calamity Campaign." Scott, you want to take the reins on that one? On the recap? Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. So so the recap was um, we had ended the last episode uh, in a semi-type cliffhanger, heard the, uh, you know, sounds of battle um, after kind of realizing that we had been, I don't want to say directly lied to, but at least somewhat deceived as to what we were all doing there um, along the lines of, um, you know, this this terrible, you know, monstrous you know, chicken, turkey, was uh, <laughs> its feathers were very prized of being, you know, heroic hunter and uh, being able to, uh, you know, defeat one of these beasts. <laughs> they were primarily <laughs> just, they were just like little little turkeys, you know, they, we, we killed them quickly and without really, without a whole lot of um, um, effort, to be honest with you. But we heard the uh, the uh, sounds of, a, of quite a strong battle um, back from where we came so we went back over there and sure enough the people that we were trying to beat to uh you know beat them to the punch as it were you know trying to score one of these turkey feathers um before before they did and thus proving that we were a better uh hunting party and a better you know better equipped to lead than uh than than this doff character was um <laughs> and uh yeah, and, and it ended up they were getting just chewed, just torn to pieces by a uh, owl bear, you know. So um, the younger brother of Dolph, uh, you know, got killed. Um, of course, we threw a javelin at him for good measure, <laughs> just to make sure. <laughs> and, and, um, but uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the really badass huntress uh, loci. Uh, she was mortally wounded. Uh, you know, if we hadn't saved her, she probably would have bled out and died, you know, had her arm ripped off and such as that. Um, and then Doff was, uh, was, was a little bit, you know, out, you know, out of it as well. And I had a chance to kind of display maybe a little bit of my not so, you know, happy traits and that, you know, if I had a chance to get it behind them and clock <laughs> them, uh, I did because I didn't want him hearing the conversation to come. Uh, anyway, all this, stuff took place um we tried to confront loci about the about what we determined to be a lie um didn't really help she went really too forthcoming with information got back to the village it had been overrun by um by a group of people uh who um who had killed quite a few people carried a lot of other people off we you know found gizba um who is our leader uh tribal leader uh, of course, my character ran to him as fast as possible. Of course, she did. <laughs> you know, um, and uh, tried tried our best to uh, to ascertain what's going on. We ended up questioning a prisoner. Uh, did I don't think we did a great job questioning the prisoner. No, I mean, I just wanted no, to I just wanted to kill him. No, to be honest you, with you, you really, I wanted to torture him really, really bad. I, I um, didn't think you wanted to kill him. That was that's not just the, the Frank thing linking I, into the NPC. I, you know, when you were sitting there polishing your staff to the naked guy that you took all his clothes off, I wasn't sure if you wanted to kill him or something else. <laughs> no, I, I, I I wanted to. I mean. 
I wasn't thinking about doing any type of, you know, like insertion into orifice. No, I wasn't thinking <laughs> that. It was it, it was more along the lines of, you know, like uh, like you know, taking uh like you know, taking the you know the billy club and and hitting it on your hand, you know. You know, we're gonna we're gonna hit you yeah, with it. Yeah, you know, that's I'm, not I'm, I'm, I'm how it. you present. Yeah, I know what well, I, I didn't have a club. I didn't know it come off, man. I didn't have yeah. a club. I, you know, no, I, you I, were I, sitting I, there polishing your staff. I mean, come <laughs> on, I know, man. I know. I was but thinking. So but obvious. I, you know, Scott, Hello. if it doesn't work in the Calamity campaign, we have a place for you at Cthulhu Come. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come and join us. No, uh, no, it, it, by it way, ended. But, Rob does. Rob is Rob. Rob's on Twitter on the on the chat right now. He doesn't believe you either. <laughs> he says, "Sure, Scott." No, it was it was a thing where I briefly thought about <laughs> maybe doing that, and then I thought, well, you know, that wouldn't really be good. And and then I'm thinking, <laughs> it wouldn't really do any good, um, you know, because I really wanted this person to think that he was about to die. But then I think I don't really want to have to play out on Twitch a torture scene. You know, th because I didn't really know. I almost got kind of scared of going too far. You know, honestly, yeah, I, 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 I really did. I really got scared, scared of going too far. People may get may get triggered or, or they may, you know, not really like that whole side. I'm not saying we should be family friendly, but I'm not exactly sure that, you know, that, you know, rape and torture is exactly where we need to start off on the third episode with either. No. <laughs> so, Actually, um, I, I, I agree with that. I think there, there probably is a line. Implied rape and bigger. torture is okay. Absolutely Actual okay. rape and torture <laughs> is no. 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 Third episode. So, so uh so we're gonna so have the, to uh, change our warning man yeah yeah so uh so anyway the the point being there is that um we got some information that these you know these were these wine merchants supposedly were also captured and kind of <laughs> pressed into service you know and and I, none of us were really rolling that good and so this is why at some point i was just like look let's just let's just kill the son bitch let's just kill him because you know and and, and i, I kind of get this idea i really wanted to go back and do that uh, but but you know when we got back he had already he had already been killed he had already died but he left behind this one little interesting dagger that was made of a material that none of us had seen really seen before so that that let us know that there's some larger world out there that we're not really that aware of gizba apparently is aware of some of it okay because he knew who they were he knew what the owlbear was so he had been had some type of exposure to some of these outside things that were away from our comfortable little envelope of uh, of uh, you know, this peaceful little valley there, and we were told to go uh, to go chase um, to go chase down this uh, this group of slavers, group of whatever marauders, brigands, whatever you want to call them, because several of our people, including some of our family members, uh, sorry, the family members of some of our characters. From our players, I think uh, I think um, uh, Dave's. I think his sister or cousin. Um, I think Aziri. I think the sister was taken. I believe. Um, luckily, yeah. I'm an orphan, so you know. <laughs> yeah, he got off outside. easy. <laughs> yeah, I got no, off you easy don't want there. That. Yeah, wait, well, yeah. David's mother was murdered. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. you're the one that got, had the roughest one, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. So <laughs> that yeah, was rough. Yeah, absolutely. That that was that, that 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 was tough on you at all. And 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 it's great because your character, the druid, is probably the one that uses the most amount of magic, and it has a lot of utility for that because he can use some of the basic, you know, sh you know, shamanic type of magic, and so that's it's very very useful. And I can see the role that he's. We've all kind of started to fit into these little roles, you know, and that's that's what's really really kind of nice to see is um is now we're getting to the point where we can kind of interact with one another and uh um, um play our characters can you know play off of one another and that's that's always kind of nice to see so i'm having a blast it's a lot of fun uh, i'm interested to see what's going to happen next and uh we will leave the party picking up trying to chase down um you know um these these people who have stolen our villagers for what purposes or what uh, is going to meet us along the way uh, who knows who knows David, what do you think? Is that a pretty decent recap, or what else can you have? I'm sure, I'm that's sure I left excellent, a few things. That was, no, that was that an was excellent good. recap. My so. I have a question for you too. How long before this, before your campaign goes broke back mountain? <laughs> what are you talking about? 
<laughs> you know, you guys set up camp in it's the woods. Four guys, man. And, and it could get very lonely out there. And... It's cold outside, you know? Gotta you know, bundle and, up. <laughs> and after this episode, I wouldn't put it past the uh, monk to be a uh, swing that way. So. I don't think no. there would be. Anything I don't think it's going to wrong... happen, Carol. <laughs> Despite think... your 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 fetish, no, uh... it's not going to happen. <laughs> no, I I I think you know he had always I I I think the monk character, for instance, is a lot more like uh, you know if I were to model him, he's kind of slipping into this you know grim of worm tongue type person that I'm actually yeah, seeing him more that. like right where he wants to use his access to power in order to, you know, increase his social standing and uh, increase his access to mates. So that's, that's what I'm kind of seeing him, you know, looking for his little, uh, uh, looking for the daughter of the chieftain or something like that. You know, that's, that's, that, that would be his play is to try to worm <laughs> his way into, uh, worm his way into the, uh, the, uh, you know, the farmer's daughter, the priest's daughter, the, the chieftain's daughter, something like that. Right. Um, but, uh, but so I'm not really seeing a whole broke back episode unless, uh, unless it would benefit him somehow, because it's all about him advancing his, 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 his station in life. That's, that's what all he's about. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things about Ingve is that one of his things is, uh, being a humanitarian and also, uh, his gift of prophecy and he had no <laughs> prophecy on this whatsoever. No premonition. Um, mm. Yeah. Ravens, Ravens didn't tell him. So, but, uh, but yeah, so it, it was interesting. Uh, it was a lot of character development. It kind of switches the roles because now it's just like, okay, you've got this, this uh, nature type and healing figure, you know, person that kind of bonds the community together, you know, however he can. And suddenly you know, something catastrophic is thrown at him with his, the murder of his mother. And then, you know, he's just got this overwhelming yeah. sense of vengeance. So <laughs> now you know how it feels. Oh, yeah. Although it wasn't your whole family, at least. That we know of. So, Carol, you know. when did you find out what happened in your family for this campaign? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Which, oh, you meant last oh, wait, wait, never mind. I, the last but, I don't know what you're also, talking about. Also, hey, uh, I almost thought she would have ended up with two characters with one leg after the, the, the puddle incident. <laughs> I was like, what is it with Frank and get in and having characters lose limbs? On? Now, granted, granted, that what happened to Taryn was a dice roll by, by Kyle. I'm sure but it was a dice roll with... with Kyle too. <laughs> no, no, because you had the NPC that almost lost her arm. So I was like, "What in the hell is going on with characters and losing limbs in this friggin' Twitch stream?" Apparently, that's a habit. All right, we're, oh my god, that's we're going, we're running long tonight. That... Long. Oh, we, we still got time. It's already eight thirty. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I mean, the next, the, the topic for tonight's discussion, I mean, we could all expound upon because we have to deal with it all the time with everything that Frank writes. <laughs> uh, the subject tonight is rumor. It played, a, it played a big part in the Calamity campaign. I think it also plays a big part in uh, Kyle's campaign. Uh, so tonight we're going to uh, do a little insight into that. We're going to roll our insight checks. Uh, let's see. Rumors. Uh, the first <laughs> subtopic is what's the point? What's the point of rumors and how do we use them? <laughs> so, Kyle, you want to take the lead on that one? <laughs> uh, I'll go straight off. I uh, took rumors in this campaign with a hammer. And I literally, the first thing I asked, among the first things I asked my players was, come up with rumors. Tell me two rumors about the island that you've heard of. Give me two rumors about the entire world that you heard of. And with that, it allows player buy-in as well as um, I don't have to think of something clever if the players think of it for me. Hmm. Now, I have to... <laughs> the only tricky part with that, though, is when they come up with the really good ideas, it's like, ah... Oh, I can't steal everything they do word for word. Otherwise, <laughs> it's not a real rumor. Or, well, I suppose it's still a rumor in that case. It's not a, a, a deception. It's not a lie or false information. 
And with that, a lot of the times I had to roll a, a die and just be like, well, is this rumor true? That's a low, no. No, I, I went with a D6 on that, and I even told the players as I rolled <coughs> Sorry. their um, background information. I told them, you know, you think the cult is dead. I'm going to take this D6, and we're going to see how successful they were. Bah. And hmm. based on, you know, one through six. Wait, why cult? Why cult? You were there for this discussion. <laughs> Oh, yeah. uh, 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 but there was a cult for one of the players' backstories, and I told them, "You're right. You narked on the cult. The police is going to come and after them. Let's see how well." Narked on the cult. That's good. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see how well. Narked. And I rolled a d6, and it's like, okay, <laughs> six. The police get every single person in that cult. You don't have anything to worry about from your backstory, or one. Yeah, they got one or two, but everybody else managed to get out. (laughs) And then uh, gradations on every number in between. I never told the player what the number actually was, but that's how I dealt with their rumors as well. It was like, all right, let's roll a d6. Uh, So dragons have been hibernating for thousands of years, but they're now starting to wake up. Well, let's see how true that is. One, no, dragons don't exist. Sorry, guys, this is a Cthulhu game. <laughs> uh, squid monsters ate all the dragons because they're tasty. <laughs> Two, six. Yeah, no, they've been rumbling around, and you're going to encounter a dragon or two in this campaign, despite the fact that it's not written in. God, wait, that was one That was one of my rumors, wasn't it? That was one of your rumors. I remember it was the dra- yeah, that yep. there are dragons that really exist in the world. I was like, I have no idea what to write. And so I'm like, shit, it's D&D. So dragons yep. exist nice. somewhere in the world. But that's how I treated rumors before the campaign even started. Um, <laughs> as far as rumors, as they come across them, um. A lot of that, some of it is pre-written out, some of it is rumors they've already given me, and anything that really comes to mind as I think of it, and then I'll write down the rumor, and then I will, I play by my own rules on that, is I'll roll d6 to figure out how true that is, and and let the dice decide, unless I think it's really good. Yeah. Then I'll make it something. (laughs) <laughs> I was going to say, not so good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Scott. Um, yeah. Since you're the one, you you and Frank are the ones with the longstanding history with uh, Dungeons and Dragons uh, amongst our group. How has rumor uh, factored into your playing? Like from, from the time you started playing like uh, back pre-first edition, up mm-hmm. till now i mean i know there was a rumor system or something like right. that when did all that start to come into play well the the very first rumors that i remember being used um inside modules and such as that you know b2 keep on the borderlands had the very first second that you walk into the very first tavern you had a die to roll and you can find out what uh what you know what rumors that you're hearing right then and there and and i always remember I've always remembered one of them was that you could hear a rumor uh, saying that Bree Yark is goblin for we surrender. And that's a rumor you can hear in, yeah. in, B, in B2. Bree Yark is goblin for surrender. Of course, when you actually get to the Caves of Chaos and you're fighting the, a group of goblins, when they say Bree Yark, they're actually signaling another group of goblins to go get an owl bear. <laughs> so that, that that actually is a is an instance of where to where the you know the the rumor that you're hearing it can be false so rumors were always around and that's because i think that at the very start so many campaigns or so many adventures start in a tavern they start in a public space where your adventurers are looking seeking to get hired so you're always looking for work sometimes your first question is So, hey, have you heard of any work for any adventurers? So what are you now doing? You're asking other people what they have heard. So whatever they tell you is basically going to be a rumor. Unless it's it's a published way bill, unless it's a published little, you know, advertisement seeking adventurers or something like that, you're 
you're constantly looking for rumors. Now, one thing I found out later on was that when you get to be in a more established campaign, it's not just rumors from the DM that you can see. You as a player can start your own rumors. Now, that's a little bit more, more, more fun, I think, being a player. And, and I did this, for instance, in the Calamity Campaign episode two, when we got back and found out that Doc <laughs> was spreading rumors about me, we spread a rumor about him. Oh, yeah. And, you mean Mr. And, Tiny Dick? <laughs> Mr. Tiny, exactly. Mr. Tiny. Right. And, and, this, and, this is, and this is how you can have a situation to where you can use w- rumors are, you know, they can be information or misinformation. And thus, there's there's value to them being used in both ways, both to get information and to plant misinformation. Um, but that has a little bit more applicability when you're running campaigns and you're having um, and role play is uh, is is an important component. I'm sure that uh, that in the Cthulhu campaign that uh, that uh, Kyle's running. Rumors, whether either overt or or um, a little more on the sly, as it were, uh, are are, are going to play a room because are going to play a part because you're going to be wanting to know what's going on. That's part of the the horror. What the heck is happening? What is going on? Why is this happening? You yeah. know, and all the theories that can come out of that. Well, they're all rumors. You never really know. Yeah. It's so like, I, 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 I love it as a construct, both on the DM side and as the player. Speaking of which, uh, one of our biggest advocates for role playing, Carol, how do you deal with rumor? Because, um, I mean, I watch you play and I can always see since I'm terrible. literally watching you, you have a terrible poker face, I but, do. I can, but I can see but, the wheels turning. But right I on. do, but I, but I, I do that on purpose on here too, because people are watching. So, you know, give them something to look at. So they don't necessarily want to run off to the, to the audio only, but they should. Then we, they can take us with us too. With them too. Um, I like I I like rumors because they make you think. I think rumors keep your players on your toes. Um, you know they can't. Although Frank putting in-game rumors out of game that were full of bullshit, that was <laughs> that was don't do that. Um, yeah, because he kept going, kept harping. It, all right, Terrence's sisters had a rumor that Terrence's parents were dead. Which wasn't true. She was lying, of course. But then Frank took it and put it out Not of game. Not at the end of the campaign. He kept putting <laughs> it. He kept putting it out of game, and I was thoroughly convinced he freaking knocked him off. Apparently, Frank likes to kill family members, right, guys? Oh, I laughed so nice. freaking hard when you know I was laugh. I was trying not to laugh at work, but um, <clears throat> but in all seriousness, no, I think they're they're fan- the the best for keeping players on the toes uh, on their toes, being lies you know like Taryn's sister saying that her parents were dead to me that is still a rumor, um, you know and then like you know then it gets you thinking you know are they, are they you know telling the truth are they lying they're probably lying I mean it's great for ramping up the paranoia, and mm-hmm. I think you know ramping up as a GM ramping up paranoia is a is it's definitely something that's that's good in a game that ramps up the drama and the interest and in, in the story uh i also think by the way to also hark i said i like to tie things from this stream into the show so the other thing i remember was frank uh the rumor that came out that the academy was destroyed that's still technically a rumor we have no, no party hasn't gone and confirmed it but it's also a way to get bits and pieces of what else is going on in your kingdom and your world to the party. You know, that stories, you know, and as, as somebody who likes to play, I like to play bards, you know, rumors are definitely a big thing that is a bardic tool. I mean, bards are the ones that basically deliver the news. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, so basically if you want to learn the news go in and (laughs) you want to go and sit in a tavern and it it said the story these rumors will come out through stories and such but a lot of that is they're not just rumors they're true and they're they're definitely clever ways of sneaking in thing events that aren't 
happening right to the party, but outside of there. It's a great way to get the news to the party and therefore also on a, a podcast like this or a stream like this out to the viewers. Mm -hmm. Helps further tell the story. Oh, yeah. And I love storytelling. So, well, like you mentioned, I mean, we basically have a class now that that's their thing is rumor, mm, an actual sub true. subclass. Uh, for Bards, the College of mm. Whispers. And now what? we also what? have uh, a background called the Grinners. And the Grinners are like a faction within uh, the Bard system. Uh, they're fairly new. They, they came into existence with uh, the Wildmount uh, campaigns written by Matt Mercer. And mm. uh, basically, they're kind of like the Harpers, but they are actually sowing rumors for subterfuge and, you know, to that's their goal is to take down tyrants or elevate or motivate a revolution or something like that. So um, I, I'm starting to see a lot more usage of that. I mean, as a, as DMS, I mean, uh, what are the mechanics for it? I mean, Kyle, you mentioned rolling uh, uh, a D six or something like that for it and all that. Um, Scott, uh, how would you employ a rumor system with, with, um, with your players? Well, rumors um, in five E. What I think you need to find out is some type of check, right? There needs to be some mm -hmm. type of charisma check. There needs to be some type of insight, uh, persuasion, intimidation. So, I normally ask, you know, I ask the characters to describe what they're searching for right and if they're doing it in a plaintive manner or uh as a request persuasion check if they're trying to you know having any type of threat or any type of thing like that intimidation if they can't make up their mind just straight up charisma you know how does the other person like them right, right. and then i'm going to be basically um I'm going to have the bit of information that I, that that could be shared or, or could not be shared, and then how that works is how well they score. And what I what I've ended up doing is that there's a basic chance to see, let's say, a DC 15, right? So 15 and up, that's fine. Now with modifiers, if they get five over that, then they're going to be either certain of it, and the information is going to be quite tailored. I want to say it's going to be good, specific, tailored. You know, something that's going to give the person confidence that what they're getting is actually really, really good. Mm -hmm. And then if it's, they just barely make it, but they don't just like hit it out of the ballpark, you know, say this is what they told them. And uh, and there may still be a hint of, uh, you know, do I really know this is true? But, you know, still, I'm going to give them enough. If they fail it, then um, then th then I fa then they fail it and they either get nothing. If they fail it really, really bad, then I deceive them. Funny. Right. Now, I give them information that they're convinced. Right. And it's the wrong information. Now, let me throw this as a wrench in there to that, though. What if your guy, your barbarian, decides to intimidate the wrong person? <laughs> Rolls really well, but that's not the person you want to intimidate. And he will tell you whatever you want to hear. <laughs> well, what, no, that's a really good point. Right. That's a really good point. And what it is, Drink. is that, is, is that I, yeah, I know, I know I don't have any alcohol in front of me. Sorry. I promise. I'll, 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 you gotta, no, you gotta Don, come next time. Where's the <laughs> no, Don I don't, Julio, no, I, man? It, I, I have to, I have to work later today. This That's podcast problem. is worth, <laughs> sponsored by Don Julio. <laughs> you have to work tonight. Julio. Wouldn't you That's... have a good idea? I, I actually, I actually have a little bit of review of some, of some things. So yeah, but no, no anyway, Ugh. um, what it is, is I try to separate the idea of, of the intimidation check, the act of intimidating, not confusing with the information that they're trying to get out. If they're trying, if they're really successful in intimidating someone who has nothing at all to give them, then they just turn into a blubbering idiot, but a very convincing blubbering idiot. <laughs> right. You know, like, like the type of blubbering idiot that, you know, may actually, you know, pee in his pants because he's so scared and he's mm -hmm. and he's telling the truth and he's getting embarrassed. But there may be consequences for that down the road. Right. There may be consequences if they're just going like the first time. OK, that's fine. If they're just going randomly, just intimidating. If you have a barbarian that's just no, I'm just going to beat up everyone until I get it out of you. 
and the players aren't, and, and maybe this is where I'm being a little bit of a Turk, and I don't really mean to, but no, no. I do. That's what the so, D and DM stands for. for yeah. So exactly. if, Dick, if, what, if they Dick? have someone who has a really, uh, you know, double proficiency and, you know, intimidation and just thinks that they could just go and just intimidate everyone, intimidate everyone, intimidate oh, everyone. Oh, I play with the character like that. <laughs> yeah. Like th that. Then what happens eventually, if there's not a little bit of finesse or if there's not, you know, if they don't have a bard or someone or a cleric there with them saying, look, if you guys tell us the truth or he's going to start cracking heads. And then it's, you know, like that. That mm -hmm. to me is an intimidation check, right? But it's being managed as a part of, as, as a part of an effort to get information. Okay. And, and it can be effective. If you just start going in and just start beating people up or you just start intimidating everyone, then the DC, I'm going to start making it harder and harder and harder till eventually you fail. And then you're going to fail badly. Mm -hmm. Right to to the and and the bad either either the cops come or whatever <clears throat> cops come or people just clam up, right? And they don't tell you anything. And the DC's forty, and you're not getting nothing, you know. So the, it needs to be. It can't be abused if you have an area to where, yeah. You know, and maybe like I said, this is where I'm maybe a anti the power gaming route to where you arrange your your characters to have one or two things that are really really good. And I don't like the way five E is done insight versus intimidation versus perception because people don't really understand when they need to use investigation when they really need to use perception right they think right. perception is just something that they just notice everything and they mm -hmm. don't ever have to look well perception you have that has to be when does it switch between passive perception versus active perception yeah. versus what's the difference between an active perception and investigation so anyway that could be a subject for our, for our next com, uh, yep. conversation. Yep. Uh, actually, yeah, yeah. Let's get Ernie yeah. on that show. <laughs> Perception <laughs> is trying to find a whore. Investigation is finding out that that's a man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so there's all these things about how rumors can play into that and how you're trying to to use your skill checks. I, I love the way that Kyle does his skill checks, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's, yeah. it takes the the transit and the downtime, it fills them full of stuff that, you know, can, can color and can impact, not just color, but actually impact the players. Mm -hmm. And this is where I think that rumors have both the, a, an aesthetic, right? There's, there's, there, there's an aesthetic value to them. And when you're yeah. trying to roll for them, um, you can construct them to be aesthetics, to be color pieces, gotcha. or they can actually be clear cut, plot points that will investigate the story moving forward and those are the ones that you know you need to make sure are not being abused and things like that but i'm sorry i, I prattled on a little bit no 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 that that lead you you led us to our next uh part of the discussion it's just like okay what about when your rumor system just fails i mean your players are not getting it i mean what are your instances incidences with it, it just it's not working it's not working for your game um because i'm i i did some research online and i've heard that you know of course they use the uh, a lot of dms use this as a tool to keep the campaign on track and all yeah. that but i mean how about incidences where it just doesn't work um carol do you have any input on that or uh, I don't when know. has never... it not been helpful <laughs> I'm trying to think. I mean, I've played, you know, I've played a lot of games. I'm trying to think of, I keep thinking there was a time where we had rumors that just went right over our heads. Mm -hmm. Because we just kind of keep just progressing. I mean, you just, you, I understand rumors are one way to tell a story, but there's multiple ways to tell the story. There's multiple ways to throw out uh, baited plot hooks that your, your uh, players will grab. I mean, Rumors mm. is just one method. If they don't get it that way, try a different method. Yeah. You know, it may require a ball peen hammer to, you know, a, a, you know, not a, not a literal one, you know, uh, but it sometimes it requires a ball peen hammer to get the message across. Nice. nice. So, uh, you know, that, but that's, that's the thing. There are, there's more than one way to skin that cat, so to speak. Sure. Sure. So that's that's. I all see you're picking around. <laughs> what what Kyle? Oh, I was gonna say uh, that's where I really uh, Scott had the right idea about rumors. The giant clue side. <laughs> so I'll drink for that. Uh, 
<laughs> but uh, having your players ask about what rumors they're looking for, what information mm-hmm. you're looking for, is a good way to make sure that your rumors get heard. Uh, another way is to just litter everything you say as a DM with subtle uh, instances of, oh, hey, he said a number, and if I look up that number in a page of a book, oh my gosh, it's the patron of the warlock! <laughs> that was... Yeah, and in that... which case, your players will listen to every single word you say. Oh yeah. Exactly the way you said it. But I think in, I think in a game like a Cthulhu game, or a horror game, I think it's actually pretty imperative that you do listen to everything the GM says. Mm-hmm. Because there's a, I think there's a lot of clues and a lot of things that that are being said. Because it said it's it's a very story heavy game, you yeah. Know, you know, more than than a straight combat game, right? But so having your important. players look for the rumors that they want to follow specifically and telling the DM allows the DM to not have to make a huge list of rumors, but to be like, oh, okay. You heard about this uh, library because Riley is really interested in books. There is a library in this next town, mm-hmm. uh, home to where all the deceased book, uh, deceased families' books go. And here's the library. There you go. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously that was intentional for Riley because he's a character who's interested in that and that's a dm knowing the character but letting the p uh the players tell the dm what they're looking for specifically really lets the dm save a little bit of time on uh, <coughs> prep and um giving essentially the rumors that the pcs want to follow as opposed to railroading them down this way now you can you do want to have those other rumors that you hear about because the world is happening around the PCs and it's not dependent on the PCs. Yeah. Uh, In which case, you know, have a short list of completely random rumors about completely random things, but then letting your PCs um, ask for specific things lets you kind of narrow down um, what you write and what they miss essentially yeah scott what's your take on that um i think i think um kyle was right when he used the word specificity right you the the players need to be specific and i'm i'm cognizant of of what carol said earlier about you know rumors as clues almost right rumors as being a plot hook or a device to as a way to pass information. So w- when, when a rumor is being used to do that, when a rumor is being used to transmit information from the DM to the players, then, then the way that the players are specific in their requests and then the method that they use to, to, to get that information out there, right? As Kyle was saying, you can just pepper little bits of things that, you know, using things that, that, that maybe they don't even have to try to ask. They're just being cognizant of their surroundings, or they could be a passive perception check. They don't even know that they're getting fed the information right now. Right. But if they fail the passive perception check, then, then they may mishear the clue. They may mishear something in the, in a two actually looks a little bit more like a, like a seven or something like that. And, and, and you could, you, you can play with little things like that, that they don't even know that they're getting the wrong information. So, so you're seeing how clues and rumors, when it's used as that, you're transmitting information from DM to player. When you flip the script and when you have players using rumors, then they're using it either to send out information, hoping to get something back, right? Mm-hmm. Or they're actually trying to influence someone else hoping that, that by giving them information or by giving them information right or wrong, that they will then go tell someone and go do something else. And then that's in the DM's hand, however he could manage it. So looking at where, where rumors are used both ways, transmitting information to the party and the, and the players, their interaction and role play with other NPCs. I think, I, I think that's where, you know, where, where, 
where where rumors fall within the within a campaign and 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 how they're used uh, and how and how they're most commonly used. But I, I think both Carol and uh, Kyle had really really good points there. Yeah. Thank you. Well, well, this has been a Inspired really great by Scott. Yeah, <laughs> this has really been a great topic to discuss tonight. But uh, yeah, I do want to bring up one failing on my part. <gasps> But we can say that I was saving the best for last. Recap of the Sunday show, yeah, the Frank like... campaign. It is our tri-generational campaign. We got three generations of uh, Franks. And uh, yeah, it's, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. This last episode, oh my God, is just incredible. It's uh, the celebration of the, of the full moon as it draws in. Uh, this is our Margu campaign. It's called uh, Party at uh, Treyarchy, if I'm pronu- uh, pronouncing that right, Frank. Pronouncing it right. Yes, pronouncing you are. Pronouncing it. Yes, you are. Uh, basically, the episode uh, evolves around a festival that is being held in this town. Uh, an order of clerics, uh, Sisters of the Silver Moon, uh, come to the town. They expect those uh, orcs that had uh, infiltrated the town uh, as lycanthropes. And unfortunately, one of the members of, of the, the Frank campaign is inflicted with lycanthropy. And yeah, he gets uh, taken in, uh, surrounded in a silver cage, and the clerics say they're going to help him. So it was a hilarious episode. Oh my God. Frank using thunder wave inside that cage. Yeah. It wasn't a good idea. <laughs> so, but it's a lot of fun. It's our Sunday campaign and they're, they're just awesome. They're, they, these guys have been playing as a family for a long time and it shows, I mean, it's just hilarious. So, but anyway, folks, that's our episode for Between the Roles. Uh, tonight we've had Carol, we have Kyle, we have Scott, we have me. And um, yeah, if you want to follow us, you can follow us on Twitter. You can follow us on YouTube. Uh, I'm sure the others have details, but we also have a, a Discord also. We have a Discord channel. So Carol is in charge of that. So yeah, if you want to join our it. Discord, it's a good way to uh, to actually talk to us. Actually, I mean not literally, you know, but but and once text. in a while we will respond. Oh, yeah. Right now, I mean, someone joined and Never. I was like, I felt I felt bad because I ended up. I've been so busy lately. Work has been just killing me, and I've been doing a lot of pa- MIDI painting and gaming. So okay, fortunately, I haven't been sitting there staring at my phone twenty four seven. Oh, but man. we would love we would love to talk, you know, with with our with with people who watch this who want to talk about D and D or about our games, you know, about our characters, about themselves and your games. We'd yeah, love to yeah. hear it. We'd it's a great to way to contact us. If you want to yeah. join a game, please do. Our, our games are are usually open. I mean, we have our one shots <laughs> uh, where anybody can play. Uh, we also have uh, between the roles. If you want to join us uh, here on our panel, feel free. <laughs> yeah. uh, this Saturday is actually a one shot. So, and level I believe eight. that yeah, level eight. That I believe that that's people. open. I went. My God, Frank is running something above something level, level three. three. <laughs> I know. So wow, it'll be awesome. It'll be so. that'll be great. So, but that's it tonight for our sh- uh, for our show, folks. Handbook. Yeah, he finally did. <laughs> no, so. I doubt it. he still doesn't know how skills work. <laughs> <laughs> he just confirmed it. He oh said no, God. no, he didn't. Well, what was it? What was it? he? There was like somebody was trying to make. It should have been. Um, it was about somebody was trying to determine a lie or something during the calamity (laughs) and he had you make a deception check of like frank (laughs) that's what you do when you lie it's the other one it's an inside check to see if you're lying well maybe someday he'll learn it's okay we just roll a d20 and then and then if we roll high enough (laughs) 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 oh was it oh maybe that's what it was it was the nature check uh versus maybe that's what it was but i also thought i remember having to a bluff 
Well, we gotta get out of here, folks. We we'll, do. we'll save this for post screen. Uh, also, we also have new logos going up for for t shirts and all that. So check out our RPG uh, tinyurl dot com slash RPG swag yeah. and, check, and be on the lookout for our new swag that's coming out. So anyway, yeah, that campaign swag. The campaign, campaign swag. swag. So swag have a good night, folks. Everybody, wave bye 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 bye. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be transitioning out of here.